2020 was always going to be a huge year for the Department of Communities. We were moving uh, from Royal Street and consolidating all of our um, teams down to the Fremantle office. So there was a lot of work that needed to be done in relation to uh, the new work from home policies which we were undertaking. We were as a collectively getting to know each other better as delegates, so we were working a lot more together. Um, just, it was, we knew 2020 was going to be huge. Well, I thought as a member it would all be business as usual, you know, dealing with things like the JCC and dealing with workplace issues for staff. Um, boy, was I wrong. And I thought I'd just be working on normal, everyday tender stuff at, at finance. And, yep, things changed. We were trying to finalise um, the um, flexible working arrangements within our department because we've been pushing um, a policy um, and we were getting near the finalisation of that. I work in waste policy and I deal a lot with waste local laws so that's assisting local governments to get their waste local laws and I expected to be doing that. In January I wasn't even in the country so uh, I wasn't uh, I was expecting to finish the rest of my holiday um, and then um, come back to uh, the usual TAFE start of the year which is usually very uh, busy, uh, lots of people coming in and spending time in the library, orientating people, helping out lecturers, uh, finding information for people and just basically doing all the hands-on stuff that you do in a library. Suddenly March came around quicker than we thought and uh, we were then all working from home, testing out the new policies that hadn't even been drafted yet. Um, well I had to move over to Zoom conferencing for, on a national level as well as um, at a state level, and uh, it's not as nice as meeting people, I have to say. Because everybody was working from home, uh, how do you stay connected? And having the, the video conferences, the video meetings, uh, was a terrific way of, of connecting. You didn't feel isolated and, and by yourself. Because it's a customer service thing, and we had a front counter, it was open, um, you kind of can't do that from home. <laughs> so we didn't have any choice. But being a single person, I actually work gave me some sanity because sitting at home, uh, working from home by myself and then staying at home by myself, um, I probably would have gone a little bit stir crazy faster than I have done anyway. COVID, um, we, we work in a uh, activity based workplace, so some people might know that as hot desking. Um, so that changed in that uh, normally you would move around the office um, and that ceased so we we were kind of allocated a desk for the day as opposed to getting up and moving around the office uh, and the other things that occurred were that um, there was a, a renewed focus around March of um, people working from home um, which hadn't really been pushed before um, and by the end of March everyone was pretty much out of the office and working from home. We worked already at home. We had a 50% working from home policy because our department had moved to June Glup about 15 months before from the city. So we were ready and uh, our IT was in place already. We all had laptop. We could work from home. So that wasn't an issue. But the issue for staff was when are we going to work from home? And the Director General wanted us to go out with government, he didn't want us to go out early even though we could um, and so it was a lot of negotiation with staff who were very anxious, concerned, concerned about family, concerned about public transport, concerned about the big drive if they suddenly started driving rather than public transport and so we had a lot of negotiations with the Director General and he's very amenable and he would walk onto the floor and then it was people would say to me, Len, are you going to ask him? So I would ask questions so everyone could hear the answer. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of fear, um, yeah. a lot of fear. COVID really brought home how vulnerable workers can be in a workforce um, and that really we were able to, for those that were had to work from home because they had you know, other um, impediments to their life that you know, were, you know, made them even more vulnerable to their health, it just really came home that we, you know, we are all in this together. And I know that's a horrible you know, statement because you know, Mark constantly talked about it, but it was something that really was important that we, we had to do it together. We had to be strong to say that you know, we weren't just an individual at home now trying to do our normal job or we were back in a workforce that was out facing the public every single day, that you know, we couldn't do it by ourselves. Um, and yeah, we really needed each other.
The public service kept on doing what it always does do. We continued working, we continued providing a service, so it, the, the, there always was that backbone that just said, um, we will keep on doing what we're paid to do. Where public sector workers really stepped up at finance was um, securing al adequate supplies of PPE, uh, particularly when there was high demand worldwide for PPE. Um, so a lot of really hard work done by um, finance staff um, on making sure that the equipment was available to keep uh, West Australians safe. Yes, well, in my previous role at the Department of Health, I actually worked in the public health division um, in a small section of it, but that section is where the Chief Health Officer, Andy Robinson, currently works. And I know quite a lot of the people that work with him um, before this COVID came about. So I, I know that they've stepped up mightily to uh, provide plans, provide procedures, policies, to, uh, check facts, check information about what's going on, to be able to provide information to politicians, to media, to all sorts of people um, in, in a timely and effective manner. Um, and I know the Chief uh, Medical Officer Andy Robinson gets the newspaper clips and the articles, but behind him is a big team of people working their butts off. And, and I think everybody in WA can be proud of what they've done. I know that they've, they've excelled in what they've done. And delegates actually raised their voice um, to upper management when there were obvious risks that sometimes when you're um, at that executive level, you only interact with that level. Um, you have very little limited interaction. So they, they didn't quite understand that when the policy says that you should actually uh, enter the workplace, you should be able to wash your hands and blah, 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 and you find that the workplace doesn't actually have a, a station to wash your hands. And it was like they were oblivious to those sort of um, threats that the staff were actually under. So, that, uh, you know, and, um, and I know that at times they got frustrated hearing about it, but um, the delegates just kept at them. Also, um, we always think, oh, the public sector is this massive beast that moves at geologic time and doesn't, you know, it's so slow you can't see change. But this was a rapid year for the public sector and it moved into place instantaneously well who would have thought it and how wonderful and what an outcome we've had and I know for our particular department the communication from from management from the top has been fabulous for staff and um, yeah no stone has been left unturned and you know it takes a pandemic to improve a few things and, but it, yeah it, yeah would have thought. Yeah, well, I, I guess that um, the the concerns around the vaccine, uh, the vaccine, you know, that that's rolled out, and uh, we, we're all safe next year, um, and that horrible COVID goes away, um, and that we can focus on other other tasks. Um, yeah, I I think it's just been such a bizarre year, uh, and very memorable for many of the wrong reasons. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think uh, hopefully we can get on with other things such as dealing with the agreement next year.